all right folks so we are starting a brand new series and in this series the idea is to build a LLM from scratch so this would be a multi-part series where we will have at least four videos which I have planned so far and we will see like if you can do more videos on this series on this uh, section of training a LLM from scratch right so the idea is to build a LLM from very scratch and to show you how the different components of building uh, LLM from scratch works uh, we will not be building a LLM which is like highly optimized a highly uh, performance oriented LLM but we will uh, do it from very scratch and the idea is to show you how the different parts of the uh, this architecture looks like and we will do it from very scratch using PyTorch right so the first part which I want to take you through is we will talk about few of the PyTorch essentials which we need while building this LLM from scratch and if you are not familiar with, with PyTorch so I have a series of deep learning with PyTorch in this channel itself so you may want to uh, go through that uh, few of the videos of that series to get yourself familiarized with PyTorch and how the training procedure works in PyTorch right so let's get started so uh, first of all we will do the imports which are like import torch uh, torch.nn as nn and also the the functional module from torch.nn right so then we can initialize uh, this variable which is a device so through which we can check what is the current device that is available if there is availability of the GPU then the device will be set to CUDA else the device will be set to CPU right so then what we can do is we can create two tensors so which are like the shape of this tensors are like 4 cross 5 and the 5 cross 4 so we have tensor 1 and tensor 2 uh, then we can like visualize those uh, tensor and to start with a uh, few of the PyTorch essentials we will start with dot product so uh, you might be aware that whenever we are uh, implementing a decoder based LLM so one of them is like masked multi-head attention and that attention mechanism is based on the scale dot product right so at first let's go through what this dot product is so this is in case you are not familiarized with how the mathematical uh, portion of the dot product works so this is one example through which you can get an understanding right so use in PyTorch we can use this operator so using this operator we can uh, do a dot product between tensor 1 and tensor 2 so one of the criteria of this uh, dot product to work is that uh, the inner dimensions of these two matrices should match right so we have a 4 cross 5 which is tensor 1 and the tensor 2 is 5 cross 4 so the inner dimension is 5 which is matching in both the tensors so we can do a dot product and we can get a shape of tensor of 4 cross 4 as tensor 3 right so we can do the similar uh, dot product using this another operator which is torch dot mat mul which will do the dot product between tensor and tensor 2 and it will produce a similar set of uh, results right so then let's talk about few of the other essentials of PyTorch which are like how we can do the concatenation and what is the difference between the concatenation using uh, dot cat and also the dot stack right so we have a tensor which is like tensor uh, t1 and, and the another tensor is t2 then we can straight away concatenate t2 to t1 using this torch.cat and we will do it on the basis of dimension equals to zero so the uh, the output tensor will be a stretched out vector which is like one the values are like one two three four the four is coming from the second tensor right things what we can do using uh, dot cat so we have this tensor one which is uh, the shape of that is four cross five then what we can do is we can uh, concatenate the tensor 1 with itself and we will do it on the dimension equals to 0 so the tensor 1 will come first then the tensor uh, 1 will again be repeated so here we can see that the shape after doing the concatenation is 8 cross 5 so here we are not creating a new dimension so the just that the existing dimension of 4 cross 5 got repeated so the number of rows got increased so the four become eight and the uh, the other dimension remain as it is so we are getting output of 
uh, 8 cross 5 right so then uh, what we can talk about is torch dot stack right so this torch dot stack generally we use when we want to create a batches of data right so when we uh, pass a batch of data to the a deep learning based model we generally need to have a dim dimension which tells you what is a batch size right so we can do it using this torch dot stack and using a list you can pass tensor 1 and tensor 2 now you can see that a new dimension got created which will which tells you that the shape of this uh, t stack is 2 cross 4 cross 5 right so here a new dimension got created which was not the case when we did it using torch dot cat right so if you are uh, if you want to create batches of data by stacking two tensor the torch dot stack is the ideal way to do that Right. Now let's talk about another very essential concept which is like RN dot multinomial. So if you are uh, familiar with LLM, so you might have seen that we want to we play with certain uh, uh, certain parameters which are like top P, top K and also the temperature. Right. So there we kind of do a, a sampling on the probability distribution which got generated by the LLM and based on that the output will uh, be shown to you or to the user right so this the the signature of this torch dot multinomial is that first it has a input uh, parameter which tells you the input tensor containing the probabilities so this input is nothing but a tensor which contains the probability values then the number of samples we want to draw which is in num samples and also the replacement equals to true or false we want to draw with replacement or not we can do is we uh, will create this input uh, which is nothing but the probabilities so here uh, each probability points to the index of the probability in the tensor right so the first index is zero right so the zero uh, index getting selected has a probability which has been given here which is 0 0.1 so there is a 10 percent chance that when you draw samples there is a 10 percent chance of getting uh, 0th index right so then there is a 40 percent chance of creating uh, one as an index in the output right so then there is a 50 percent chance of getting two right so these are the probabilities that we pass to this torch dot multinomial and we mentioned that the n samples equals to 10 and then also we mentioned that replacement equals to true so now in this sampling process we did not get uh, any values which are related to zero and we get uh, values which are related to 1 and 2 right so if we run it again we will may get a different result so if I run it now you will see that we got a 0th index uh, as a sample and uh, if we run it multiple times we will get uh, different results at each time right because the probabilities are associated with this sampling process right so with this i hope you got an understanding of what this nn dot multinomial is so this we will use when we are sampling uh, from the llm so then let's talk about uh, this concept which is uh, trail matrix so this will this will return a lower triangular part of the matrix or a batch of matrices input and the other dimensions are uh, will be set to zero so you can see we have this tensor one and if you just apply torch dot trail so the upper dimension or the upper triangular matrix of this becomes zero and rest of the values will be as it is right so then we can uh, what we can uh, also talk about is this masked fill so what we uh, generally do in case of while building a masked multi-head attention block so there we uh, apply a mask to the matrix after doing uh, the scaled uh, dot product so here what we are at first doing is we are creating a torch dot once so that will create a 4 cross 5 matrix of all the where all the values are equals to 1 then we are creating a torch dot trail so that will uh, zero out the upper triangular matrix of this 4 cross 5 matrix and then what we are doing here is whenever the values are equals to zero that will be marks to the minus infinity right so this tensor one got converted to this out 
matrix where the upper triangular matrix is minus infinity and the lower values are kept as it is right so generally we apply this minus infinity because once we apply the softmax on top of minus infinity these values will be become zero right so that we will uh, see whenever we will uh, uh, implement the masked multi-head attention. Now let's talk about what this uh, transpose is. So we have this T3 uh, matrix or tensor where we have the shape as 2 cross 3 cross 4. So this you can visualize in this way that 2 is the batch size, then 3 is the context length and 4 is the embedding dimension. Right now, if you want to swap out a few of the values, what we can do is we can uh, do this uh, t3 dot transpose and mention what are the dimensions that we want to swap in between. So we mentioned that zero and one. So the values of two and three will be swapped, and the final uh, output or the final shape will become like three cross two cross four. Right. So this is uh, very much essential if you, whenever we are doing a dot product, the inner dimensions should match. So if those uh, inner dimensions are not matching, sometimes we need to do the dot transpose and uh, uh, change the dimensions so that the dot product becomes much more easier to do, right? So then let's talk about this NN dot embedding. This NN dot embedding is a process to convert the token IDs to a multidimensional vector. So each of the token IDs can be converted to a multidimensional stretched out uh, vector. So uh, here what we generally do is we create a table, what that we are naming as embedding. And using this NN dot embedding, uh, we are mentioning that the shape of that table is uh, vocab size uh, cross the embedding dimension. So here the vocab size is 50 and the embedding dimension is 100 right so imagine this table as a lookup table where there are 50 rows which are which are corresponding to each of the uh, words or the tokens of the vocabulary and each of the uh, tokens are represented by a stretched out vector of 100 dimension right so now if we just imagine that we have this uh, text which is like LLM from scratch. Now the LLM is represented with a token of 1, the from is represented, represented with 0 and the scratch is represented with a token ID of 5. Right? Now if you pass this to this lookup table, it will produce uh, output which will be the shape of 3 cross 100. So each of these tokens becomes a stretched out vector of 100. Right. So uh, if you just take out the first value or the first token, then if you just do a dot shape, you can see that the shape is 100. Right. So this is this will be a representation of the uh, the token which is associated with LLM or the token ID is equals to one. Right. So this is a fancy way to create a multidimensional representation of the um, a token ID. Right. So this nn dot embedding is also a trainable parameter. So we will plug in in the, the while creating the decoder based LLM, we will plug in this nn dot embedding, and that will get trained along with the model, so that the embedding is much more uh, meaningful to the text that has been uh, passed as an input and output, right? So then let's talk about what this register buffer is. So uh, this register buffer is a kind of concept what we generally use when we are creating uh, NN dot module or a model using PyTorch. So uh, let's uh, take you through what this actually is, right? So let's start with without using this register buffer, right? So we can see like I have commented out this. So this is nothing but the mask which I have talked about when we are talking talking about how we can mask out certain upper triangular part of a matrix. So this is just implementation of that. And we have three learnable parameters, which are like W query, W key, and W value. So this we don't need to understand at this point of time. So you just think that there are three learnable parameters and a, a mask that is present, which is not associated with learning. So there is no learnable parameter that is associated with self dot mask right so then we have this forward function and then we create a random input value and using that input value we can create a batch of data by stacking uh, this input twice and then we can pass that value to this model right so we will initialize the model here 
and once we initialize that model and we pass the batch through this model we will get the output right which is working fine now in case of llm right where um, the data volume is very big and the model architectures are very big also right so the the end product what we will build at the end of this series will be associated with like uh, i think 56 million uh, parameters right so due to this huge volume of data and the huge number of parameters we generally take the advantage of gpu so we move the model and also the data to the gpu and then we uh, do the model training so you can see at first i have moved the batch to the device which is nothing but the gpu and also i have moved the model to the device right so then if i just pass the batch to the model uh, to get the output it will throw an error right so we can see the error is expected self and mask to be on the same device but got mask on the cpu and the self on the cuda right so the here the self means the learnable parameters which that got transferred to the cuda but the mask did not get transferred to the cuda the mask is still on the cpu this is a uh, one of the bug you can say that pytorch has so it generally transfers the learnable parameters to the cuda and uh, the non-learnable parameters associated with the model stays on the cpu right or the base device right expect in this way so we can see that the w query w key and the w value uh, are on the cuda but the mask is on the cpu right so to tackle this what we can do is we can use this register buffer now if we uh, do this operation you can see we will not get any error so uh, and uh, with this uh, two device operation also all the learnable parameters and also the mask got transferred to the gpu and we can seamlessly do the operations of passing the batch to this attention block right so this is a very much essential concepts which are like pytorch essentials which you should get familiar with so before going to the next videos i will urge you to go through this notebook run it in a google collab and and get familiarized with this pytorch essentials because these are uh, very much required when we will do the uh, from scratch implementation of a llm right next few videos we will uh, go through the different phases of uh, building llm from scratch and if you do not have any gpu don't worry about that you can use the google collab as an environment i built this whole series in such a way that all the code is runnable in the google collab free version itself right so with this i will end this video i hope you are excited with this uh, new series uh, i will see you in the next video thank you